Okay, video coming up next. I'm going to show you how to use that setup uh, Immersion RC Easy UHF, but with the Eagle Tree Vector, and also showing you how to use the CPPM or SPPM function so that you can get the RSSI and also the link quality uh, across the one channel, and also go through a basic vector config. Got to remove my FR Sky X8R off, which is currently in S bus mode. So we'll do everything from scratch. So remove that and fit the receiver. So uh, check back in a second. Okay. So one of the things that most people get wrong um, when they're setting up the Easy UHF with the vector is the uh, the PPM muxing settings uh, so first things first what I did was I took a couple of screenshots of my other easy UHF setups so that I know this receiver will be set up exactly like the rest of my other ones so it's nice and, e nice and easy to set up so as you can see I've got a 4 channel easy UHF there with a little quarter wave monopole connected up via the USB to my laptop and these are my original settings from my plane or one of my planes so as you can see firmware version 1.5 it's also bound to my transmitter you can see there 8628 uh, PPM channel count is 12 that's key to getting your link quality and your RSSI set up correctly make sure you set up using 12 channels and frequency band you can have that set to your specific uh, region and if you go down to servo mapping again this is absolutely key servo output if you're using channel 1 on the actual receiver itself then channel 1 servo output needs to be specified as PPM muxed that means you're going to get all of your servo signals down that one servo wire and you can then specify the channel listings in your PPM slots on the left hand side and then finally PPM 11 needs to be set to RSSI PPM 12 set to link again those two are very key in a successful setup you get the easy UHF PPM setup right and configuring the vector is an absolute walk in the park Okay, so I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to upgrade the firmware on this Easy UHF receiver to be 1.50 to match my others, and then I'll be right back. I'll have it installed or at least mounted on the quad frame, and then we can look at how we go through the receiver analysis and receiver analysis wizard and other functions. So check back in a minute. Thank you. Okay, well the Renegade Master, we're back once again. So, I've got the Immersion RC, Easy UHF set up there. I've got power into channel 2, and as per the previous config, taking the SPPM signal from channel 1 output and the receiver. Just try to tidy some of the wires up a little bit. <coughs> I've moved the VTX. Uh, from originally it was by the GPS puck over here so I've moved it over there so hopefully it won't interfere with the GPS and one big thing to note before you do anything with programming the vector whether it be planes or quads or multi-hex whatever remove the props last thing you want is prop bites when you're setting it up because uh, it can get very nasty okay so now I'm going to set up profile on my Frisky transceiver, transmitter even, and then I'll set up the screen with the video receiver because you're going to need that so that you can see the OSD and you'll be able to see it all in action in a moment. So it's dead easy to do, you just have to make sure that you turn off the internal uh, Tyrannis RF module, tell it to use the external, set up the the uh, PPM frame 
and also the channels as mentioned you have to set it up in 12 channel mode um, otherwise you will struggle to get the link quality of the RSSI out of the receiver so like I said it's dead easy to do so I'm already on the quad so I'm just going to go through <clears throat> so as you can see the if I scroll up internal RF modules off external RF module sets ppm and that just needs setting it's 1 through 12 some people have the ppm frame set around 28 I've got all of mine set to 30.5 and 300 microseconds and that seems to work fine trainer mode is master and that's it you're good to go So now we're going to go through uh, configuring the Vexa to um, talk nicely to the Easy UHF receiver. Um, as you can hear the ESCs are beeping away frantically, that's because I've got the USB lead plugged in. It's worth noting that with the, ES, with the USB lead plugged in, all outputs are disabled. So if you try and spin up the motors, or if you try and, if it's in a plane and you try and uh, alter the elevators or the ailerons, it won't do anything because it disables the output. <clears throat> I have my on-screen display set up on the right hand side so that I can see what's happening. And I've got my laptop set up in front of me. So first things first, like I said before, it was set up to use SBUS previously. I'm now going to wipe the vector and start from scratch. So, nice and easy. Factory reset. Are you sure you want to reset to factory settings? But yes. <coughs> Wait for the vector to reboot. If I move the move the quad, you can see that the artificial horizon is moving as well. So, let's go through the configs. So first of all we need to choose an airframe. And as you can see it's an Alien X mode, so choose an X mode quad. And we will apply that now. So, RC configuration. And we're now going to run the receiver analysis wizard. But before we do that, we're going to select serial SPPM on the right hand side. Now if you remember previously, we set up our SSI and link quality on specific channels. If I find the document. <clears throat> so we set it up for RSSI on 11 and link on 12. So RSSI on 11 and link on 12 and we'll apply that. <coughs> now first of all you'll see there's no RSSI, the indicators are in the top left hand corner but there's a question mark there so it's not been set up and also there's no link quality there either. So, we're going to go through the receiver analysis wizard now. It's a bit tricky doing this with one hand, so you'll have to bear with me. So, configure your transmitter. When ready, disconnect your model's motors or props, which we've done. Always do this without the props or without the motors on. So, we're going to go English. Next. Receivers SPPM. Next. Now, this is for failsafe. I've got mine on a, I will have mine on a mode sub mode switch. A number of channels detected in pulse train is zero. So, what's happened there is I've obviously got my aileron cable 
from the vector plugged into the wrong port on the Easy UHF receiver. So I'm going to pause the video, change it round, and then I'll resume the video. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, back again. As you can see now, we have 12 channels detected, which is exactly what we're looking for. So, again, got the OSD on the right hand side of us so we can see what's happening. Got the transmitter on my lap ready to set up. So, here we go. As you can see as well, currently nothing is bound on any of the channels. I have already preset my transmitter so that I've got mode and sub mode are on SA and SB. So I'm going to go through the the receiver analysis wizard now. So move mode switch. Throttle all the way up. Throttle all the way down. Uh, this could be slightly difficult. Climb. Left. Sub mode. <coughs> Gain knob I'm not actually going to use, so I can skip that one. So it's gain knob not detected. Kill switch I'm not going to use, but I will set that up later, but for the purpose of this video I'm going to leave it out. So, as you can see, throttle channel 2, mode channel 5, sub mode channel 7, 4, 3 and 1, which is great. Now it's going to learn about stick throws and fail safe settings. Turn off the transmitter and click next once it's off. So, Tyrannus is going off. And then hit next. Turn the transmitter back on. Welcome to Toronto's. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Okay. So again, this can be a little bit difficult with one hand. and then finish is complete. <coughs> so you'll now see that we've got 100% RSSI just here. So if I turn my transmitter off, it drops down to almost zero. Transmitter back on again. Back to 100. So, to set up link quality, <clears throat> and link quality in some respects is more important than RSSI, because you could have a really poor RSSI, but you could have an extremely good link quality, and that's what, uh, that's what dictates how good a control you will have over your airframe. So we're going to go into the OSD, you have to bear with me whilst I find it. There we go, link quality. So I'll move that over there. And hit apply. And then what you'll see is link quality underneath my RSSI on the left hand side. And it's about as simple as that. There are obviously other things that you can configure in the OSD, but for the purpose of this video, and the intents of this video for setting up RSSI using SPPM on the Easy UHF receiver, it's as simple as that. If to start off with it doesn't show your link quality or your RSSI, 
after you've done your receiver analysis wizard the first time and you've added the link quality into your OSD, go back to your receiver analysis wizard and rerun it. It can, can take one or two goes, but generally after two goes, or if you've done it right the first time, and if you've got your Easy UHF SPPM settings right as per my previous video, or previous section of the video, then it is as easy as that. Thanks for watching. Any questions, do ask. I'll try to answer. Apologies for the noise of these blooming speed controllers. Bye for now. Hello again. One last thing. Um, what you will find is once you've set it up, your frame will continue to beep. And that is because you have to confirm the airframe type. And if you look at the OSD, it actually says outputs off airframe not okayed. So the easiest thing to do is to go through the checklist so you go into the sub mode go into new airframe checklist change airframe type it's currently set to quad but you just need to ok it so you go in toggle sub mode switch to confirm airframe not okayed so we're going to go down Get it right in a minute. Please if I uh, spare me a second. So just unplug the battery, plug it back in. So click sub mode to accept. Yay, and there we go. So now I'll run through its uh, post fix countdown checks give you any other warnings as well. Don't forget to do the compass calibration dance. Try and do it wherever you, if you change your flying place and try to do it at each location where you fly each time. You'll be surprised how it is affected by things like nearby overhead pylons, close buildings and stuff like that. So thanks for watching again. Any questions let me know. Bye for now.